Okay, so today we're talking about Lewis dot structures. Lewis dot structures are just a way for us to talk about where the electrons are in a molecule, how they're being shared, and what type of bonds are forming. So we're going to quickly go over how to draw Lewis dot structures and we'll um, use a couple of examples and do a couple of practice problems just to refresh your memory and then we'll also talk about more complex Lewis dot structures and how to draw those. So just a couple of quick reminders. So we learned the rules for drawing Lewis dot structures, but I know that we might have forgotten those. So our very first thing that we're going to do when we draw a Lewis dot structure is we're going to count the number of valence electrons in the molecule. So we're going to start with something fairly simple. We're going to start with carbon tetrachloride, so that's CCl4. So we know that carbon has four valence electrons, and each chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are four of them. So that's going to give us 28 plus 4 is 32 valence electrons. Okay, so we've counted our valence electrons. Next thing we're going to do is determine what the central atom is going to be. Um, generally speaking, the central atom is going to be the one that forms the most bonds, or it's going to be the least electronegative atom. Put that central atom in the middle. So in this case, carbon forms four bonds. Chlorine only forms one, so we're going to put carbon in the middle. Carbon's also less electronegative than chlorine. So we're going to put carbon in the middle, and then we're going to place our other atoms around that central atom. So we're going to put chlorine all around carbon. This works out nice and easy since there are four chlorines. We'll put one on each side of carbon. Okay, so we have our four chlorine atoms around our carbon atom. So our next step is going to be to draw lines representing the bonds. Each one of these lines is going to represent a shared electron pair. So I'm going to draw a bond between carbon and each of those four chlorine atoms. And then our next step is going to be to allocate the remaining valence electrons. Um, first we're going to allocate those to the peripheral atoms and then we're going to allocate them to the central atom. So um, we know that we had 32 valence electrons. We've now used up eight of them. Two here, two here, two here, and two here. So we still have 24 valence electrons remaining. So we're going to start by allocating them to the peripheral atoms. So that's going to put two, four, six on this chlorine. This chlorine now has eight valence electrons because it has these six and then the two that it's sharing with carbon. We're going to do the same thing with this chlorine atom so that it now also has eight. We've used up six and six, so we've used up 12. We still have 12 left. We're going to put two more here, two more here, two more here, two more here, another pair, and another pair. Okay, so now my last step is that I am going to check that all the octets are satisfied. And if not all octets are satisfied, I'm going to reallocate electron pairs to be double bonds. So if all of the octets are satisfied as they are in this particular example, then I don't need to reallocate anything. We can see that chlorine has eight each chlorine has eight and the carbon has all four shared pairs which gives it eight. So in this particular example we're done. Okay so let's go through another example and um, let's try out a different one. So let's look at carbon dioxide. So here's our rules. We're gonna leave. So we're gonna talk about carbon dioxide. So here's CO2. So Step one, count the number of valence electrons in the molecule. We have four in carbon and two times six in oxygen. So we have 16 valence electrons. So next thing we're gonna do is determine our central atom. Carbon forms four bonds, so we're gonna put carbon in the middle. So we have carbon here in the middle. We're gonna place the other atoms around it. So we're gonna put the oxygen on either side. 
We're going to draw lines representing our bonds. So we have our two lines representing our bonds. We've now used up four of our electrons, so we only have 12 left. So I have 12 valence electrons that I can allocate. So I'm going to put two, four, six on the oxygen. Now I have six left. And I'm going to put two, four, six on the oxygen. And I've used up all my valence electrons. Now if we look at oxygen, its valence electrons are satisfied. It has eight. If we look at the other oxygen, whoops, sorry. Um, it also has eight, so it's satisfied, but carbon is not. And so we're going to take these, this pair and we're going to reallocate it to be a double bond. That oxygen still has eight, but now carbon has two, four, six. So I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to take that pair and I'm going to reallocate it to be a double bond. And so we can see that our final structure is carbon double bonded to two oxygens, each of which has two lone pairs. And that's our formula for carbon dioxide. Okay, so now we've seen reallocating. Let's talk about um, another example, and that example is going to be one where we're not necessarily satisfying all of the octets, or where we don't have octets to satisfy. So we're going to talk about um, ammonium. Okay, so when we have an ion, we need to recognize that if we have a plus ion, a cation, that means that it is missing that many electrons, and if we have a negative ion, it has added that many electrons. So our nitrogen has five, each hydrogen has one, so that's one times four. But because we have this one positive, we're actually going to subtract one electron. And so we have nine minus one, so we have eight valence electrons. Nitrogen can form multiple bonds, and hydrogen can only form one. So we're going to put nitrogen in the middle. We're going to draw the other atoms around it, so we're going to put all of our hydrogens around this nitrogen. And we're going to draw lines representing the bonds, so one, two, three, four. Okay, two, four, six, eight. I've used up all of the valence electrons. Hydrogen is satisfied with two. Nitrogen has eight. Everything is satisfied. When we draw the Lewis dot structure for an ion, the last step that we need to do is to put the square brackets around it and write charge. So we're making progress. Um, let's talk about one more example. Um, and we'll leave it there, and then we'll have another video on exceptions to the rules. So um, one more fairly simple one. Um, let's go ahead and do, um, let's see, CH2O. Okay, so we're going to count the number of valence electrons. We have four, we have two times one, and we have six. So we have 12 valence electrons. We know that carbon is going to be in the middle. Carbon makes the most bonds. So we're going to put carbon in the middle, we're going to put hydrogen around it, we have two hydrogens, and we have an oxygen. We're going to draw one line representing a bond. So I've used up six of my valence electrons, I have six remaining. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. When I do that, we can see that oxygen's octet is satisfied. But carbon only has six, and solve them by taking this lone pair and making it a double bond. So that our final structure is carbon double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to each of two hydrogens. As always, if you have any questions, let me know.